Hello, I'm Ron Stobart from NIAB TAG. I'm Head of Agronomy, Knowledge Transfer and Training and I look after a lot of our works in soil management and cover cropping and farming systems. I want to talk today a little bit about some of the work we're doing with cover crops. A lot of our work is in, contained in the new farming systems project at Morley. This is a, long t this is a series of long-term rotation studies looking at aspects of fertility building, cover cropping, soil management and soil amendment use. Within the new farming system studies we're looking at cover crops in a number of ways. So we are looking at cover crops and how we might use them as deep root for their deep rooting characteristics. So this is where we want to put roots down below the level that we can easily reach with cultivation equipment to do some deep soil rectification. Actually put some structure and some biopores back into those soils at depth. We're also looking at using cover crops for fertility building. So we might be using legumes, we're looking at opening up that soil surface structure, fixing a bit of nitrogen, improving the fertility within our cropping situations. We've also been looking at cover crops for a range of other uses. We've done some work looking at biofumigant type approaches for cover crops and also done some work looking at companion cropping approaches. This is where you sow a cover crop alongside an establishing crop and then use frost and other mechanisms and herbicide control to naturally control it over the winter period. Just going back to some of the work we've been doing on biocultivation, we've certainly found we can find benefits to yield where we are using cover crops, deep rooting cover crops. It has often taken us two or three cycles through, but particularly on some of the lighter soil types where we have been using deep rooted cover crops in conjunction with shallow tillage approaches, we're finding benefits over those cropping situations where we aren't using the shallow, we aren't using the deep rooting cover crops. Where we're looking at some of the fertility building approaches and some of those shallower cover crops and legume systems, um, this figure here illustrates quite an interesting point. This is looking at infiltration rate. So we have time along this axis and we have moisture infiltration here up the side. So this green line is looking at some of our approaches where we haven't been using cover crops and the blue line above it is one of our specific cover cropping approaches. So this is showing we're getting much more moisture into the soil much more quickly. So comparing after 20 minutes, we've got about three times the amount of soil, three times the amount of moisture into that soil. So what's that actually telling us? Well, we're opening the soil up. So as you're opening up that soil space, we're taking much more moisture into that, much more moisture is being held within that soil. So in some ways, it's an indirect assessment of how we're improving that soil structure. Also, if we're taking that moisture into the soil, if it's going into the soil and being held there, it's not running off. So if it's not running off, we're reducing erosion, we're reducing diffuse pollution risks. And when we're looking at that, particularly on light soils, if we're holding that moisture within the system on a light soil, that's got to be beneficial for yield. We're keeping the moisture where the crop can access it rather than running off the surface. Within these studies, we've also looked at what happens in terms of yield and margin. And this lower chart here is looking at the differences we've seen in terms, of, in terms of margin over nitrogen costs for a range of different cover cropping approaches. And we see differences between the different specific cover cropping systems that we're using. So for example, one of the approaches we're using is something we've borrowed from the organic system where we're looking at a legume bicrop. This is a crop of clover that we established in the base of a wheat canopy and we've left it there. It's been there for seven years now. And what we tend to see here is good improvements in margin over N, but really only where we're using that system in conjunction with very low input systems, where low levels of N have been put on the crop. That benefit tends to fade as we go into higher input systems. Some of the other systems we're using, the fodder radish based systems, the fodder radish based systems where we're putting down deeper structure into those soils, seem to work best for us where we're using those in conjunction with shallow tillage systems. We've had some good results on lighter soils. So where we're using the deeper rooting cover crops with a shallow tillage system on a lighter soil, that's putting structure at depth, giving us higher wheat yields and probably less variable wheat yields if we compare that to the same shallow tillage systems where we're not using the cover crops. One of our more, probably more robust approaches in terms of yield and margin improvement is where we've used legume mix species ahead of spring crops in rotations. Legume mix species can be a little bit more difficult to manage and maybe a higher hurdle to enter in the cover cropping arena compared to using a brassica cover crop. But we have seen some quite consistent returns 
from their use, typically giving us improvements in margin and cross rotations of perhaps 40, 50, 60 pounds a hectare. Now you obviously need to take into consideration with that the actual cost of management and establishment of the cover crop, which can also be maybe 40 to 50 to 60 pounds a hectare. So at the moment you could say that's perhaps just wiping its face. But then again, you also need to consider what you're going to get from environmental payments. So here on this farm at Morley, we are in HLS. So the HLS scheme actually gives us an additional £65 a hectare, hectare for using cover crops. So that £60 a hectare we're making as improvements in margin, combined with our £60 a hectare that we're actually making from inclusion in the scheme, actually lifts us much more strongly into the black there. I did briefly mention companion cropping. This is something else we've looked at. It's a system I first saw in France a few years ago where they're looking at sowing materials with rape crops as they establish in the autumn and then they will die off over the winter months. This is something I think needs more evaluation in the UK. We've certainly seen differences between the different types of companion crops we've used and we've seen interactions with the row spacings with wide and narrow rows. But there's potentially some promise in the system if we can get those mixes right and perhaps some other benefits may be improving our predator habitat as well as some of the more direct benefits we can get from growing those cover crops. So we're seeing some interesting benefits from cover crops. We're seeing some variation in what those cover crops are doing in response to the specific system that we're using. There are areas where we still need to sort of learn a bit more about how to best manage those cover crops for UK systems. So I think cover crops can be of benefit to us on farms. It's choosing the right cover crop and it's understanding what you wanted to do. So the right cover crop for that end point as well.